All right, so good morning, good afternoon. How are we all doing today? How are we feeling? Okay, great. So today we're looking at conflict resolution in the workplace. So how are we going to handle that when issues come up? Okay. When we have maybe um, conflicting interests, how are we going to go about those things? So um, can you give me some examples of workplace conflicts that you can think of? Maybe it happened to you, a friend of yours, or maybe it's even in a movie, just examples that you can think of workplace conflict. Anyone? Anyone wants to share maybe from your experience or your friends or just a story someone told you? Okay, contribution of work, Henoch, how can that like cause um lead to workplace conflict? Contribution of work, distribution of work, sorry. You want to unmute and maybe explain or just tell us how? Okay, so like not agreeing who should do what, you're not able to like, um, maybe you have, you're not able to distribute the responsibilities around. The person don't know their roles and um, responsibilities. And yes, it can lead to conflict in the workplace too. So any other question before we continue? All right, so, so let's look at some of the examples of workplace conflicts. So for the first one there is lack of rec recognition. And this usually happens if maybe someone contributes to a tax and then at the end of the day, the person is not being credited. Say for example, you have maybe a, maybe a colleague is working on a project and maybe, um, then, ask for your input about it, then you gave your input. And at the end of the day, you guys worked on it together, basically. You, end up, you ended up working on it together. But because he was the one that was assigned the task, so he was the one that was like giving all the credit. And the thing is, okay, yeah, like you understand, but at least you, that you should have mentioned like, oh, you assisted or talked about your own contribution. So and as a result, we're not even recognized. What your contribution was not acknowledged. So that can lead to a conflict in the workplace. So another one there is interdependent inter um, conflict. And this one is when maybe a particular person's who is affected by another person's own. For example, if we need, for if you have maybe in a team, you have people that will have to collect the data and then people that will have to like analyze it and then the ones that will develop the model and all of those things. So it's just like it strings, like we have the first person that has to work on it, the first, maybe the first thing that has to do the task. So your own, if you are in the middle of it, your own is dependent on what the other person does. So if you, if maybe the person that was assigned the collect, uh, data collection tax, if the person does not do the tax on time, if the person, like it can affect your own work as well, since your own work is dependent on how effective the person is. So um, conflict can arise from such situation too. So that one is the interdependence conflict. And then we have workload imbalance. This is majorly seen when you are working in a team and then you realize um, some of the team members can be feeling like they are, um, they are being overloaded they are working too much, why others are not even doing as much or others are not pulling their own weights and they are not even reprimanded. So you have this imbalance in the um, workload and undefined roles and responsibilities. And just like what um, Gabriel said then, when we have undefined roles and responsibilities, maybe as a team lead or the manager or the supervisor, you do not distribute the role and the responsibilities of each person very well. Conflicts can arise because you don't know who, who should do a particular thing. If, okay, if they even ended up doing it together, who is the person that will take the credit? Who, like a lot of um, conflicts can arise when we don't have defined roles and responsibilities. Then we have the interpersonal conflicts. 
So this type of conflict is when, um, say for example, say for example, maybe you know somebody outside of work and you guys don't really go well. You guys like, you do have misunderstanding, but you don't mind because you just see once once. It's not like you see all the time. So like, you don't mind, you guys have different um, maybe values and that's okay. But then you got to realize that um, in at the end of the day, you, you ended up working in the same place and on the same team or you guys had to like work together on a project so because you already have like a notion about the person and you guys already have maybe a misunderstanding in the past like that can affect you the way you will work if it is not being addressed so you can start bringing up and bring, bringing up your like your personal um your personal issues into your professional life if it is not addressed so all of those things can lead to Conflict. So those are some of the examples of um, workplace conflicts. We have maybe lack of recognition, interdependence conflict, um, work workload imbalance, undefined roles and responsibilities, and interpersonal conflict. Those are just a few of the workplace conflicts that are out there. So now, now if you are looking at it, conflicts, conflicts. Everyone wants to avoid conflicts. No one wants like to be addressing conflict and the likes. But one thing we have to recognize is it is a normal and healthy part of relationship. There's no how two persons or even more than two persons can be um, working on a thing together. You cannot expect two persons to, to always agree all the time. There's no how conflicts will come up. But what is most important is we should learn how to deal with it in a very healthy way. That is the most important part of it. So it is not like the conflict shouldn't come up at all, but what we should be looking at is how is it being addressed when, whenever those things comes up. So when it is mismanaged, it can harm relationships, it can even lead to um, low productivity in the workplace and the likes. But when handled response, um, with, in a respectful and positive way, it provides opportunity for growth and everybody's idea will be welcome and it will lead to more creativity in the workplace. So now if you are looking at conflicts at the um maybe in it in the workplace when you are looking at conflicts it's always assumed to be oh maybe two persons that does not really go along and go well together or two persons that does not really work well together but most times it's deeper than just um communication issue when conflicts come up sometimes they'll just be like oh so we should just like work it out go and discuss it Yes, it is part of this communication is part is how you will address it. It's part of how you will address it. But we should understand like um conflict is more than just communication problem. We have maybe it comes from differences in maybe your values, your history, your habits, your beliefs, your policies, different things that arise in different um, that leads to conflict, not just a communication issue. So because of that, it will be unrealistic, maybe if you are the supervisor or the manager, to just send your employees to communication training or anger management classes. You have other things that you should do that will help with this to address the conflict. And that's some of those things I will look at here. So successful conflict um, resolution, it depends on the ability to manage stress while remaining, remaining calm and alert and also how you control your emotions and this one is, has to do with maybe when the conflict is arising between you and someone else or you and a group of person like it is happening to you yeah the one. so that's this is where some of the things i can use to to um to manage those conflicts so you should control your emotions and your behavior and you should pay attention to the feelings that is being expressed if you're in this situation so for example, if you are a colleague, you have maybe, uh, let me say misunderstanding, or sometimes conflicts go deeper than just misunderstanding. So you should be able to like pay attention to what, not just only what the person is saying, but the feelings, how the person is expressing their feelings, you should pay attention to that. And while doing that, you should try to remain calm and be aware of and respectful of your differences. So that's how you can like um that's one step that you can take to um to re resolve conflicts when it is happening to you there are some conflicts that it is not like happening to you per se maybe you are witnessing it so we'll look at how you can also come in in those positions to to resolve the conflict but here now when i look at some conflict resolution approach 
and this one is um when you is in the, like when the conflict is happening to you you are the one in the position so how i how should you approach it so the first thing is you should look at it as a win-win um approach the first approach we have here is the win-win approach and here why people why people battle over like opposing situations like uh, this my reddit all of those things so the first one is we have here is you should look at um cooperation so you should look at the way like you want to win and you want the other person to to win and it's not just like oh you're only you like so for example let's look at this example now so we have um two people in the kitchen and we have just one orange left and both of them want it so like what will you assume like how should they resolve that there are two oranges and uh, one orange i mean in the kitchen and we have two persons around to make use of the orange so what and how will you tell them to like to to resolve that issue there anybody well let's not waste much of our time what will come to most of our mind is just oh is one orange they can just divide it into two like most people we agree like just divide the origin to two then the person one person will take half the other person will take the second part so now if then let's assume like like that's what they do they ended up dividing the origin into half but one person now goes to like the juicer and start juicing herself and at the end of the day you find that like the orange juice that is made is really small why the other person with some difficulty as well just great the range of the orange so later on you ended up realizing that why you have one orange in the kitchen one person needs the juice why the other person needs the range of the orange so if initially they've taken time to understand their need not just looking at it like what's the solution they understand like what's the issue here what are they trying to what's the need like what do they really need there they would have realized like they can the person that needs the juice will get enough juice why the person that needs the rain so we get enough rain all you have to do is squeeze the um the juice of the orange and then when you are done with it you give the other person the rain to maybe make the cake or whatever else person wants to do so what we are just trying to look at there is when issues arise our focus should not be like what's the solution was like that should not be the first thing you look at but you should also look at like what's the need like what's the main issue that is arising try to understand that first before we now move on to okay how can we solve the issue how can we resolve the conflict so you should be open to adapting your position in light of shared information and attitude and also you should not attack the person but rather it should is the problem that you are trying to solve is that's what you, are, you should be looking at not the person attacking the person so that is the win-win approach and we have another one that is ap um, appropriate assertiveness so here is making use of the i statement so what you have to do is and I, like we said this approach is when it is happening to you how do you resolve this conflict when you are the, it is happening to you so the thing you have to do is you state um, what you need and you use the I statement. So this will allow the other person to know how you feel about the situation or about the issue. And your I statement should be very clear and it should be free of expectations. What you are just trying to do here, you state clearly about how you feel about the situation and not um, trying to like, not trying to like put the blame on the other person you're just saying how the situation affects you and does it so that is appropriate assertiveness and when you are doing that you are not expecting the person to maybe <clears throat> maybe to make you feel better or any of those things all you are doing here is just stating the issue how it it makes you feel sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so now the next one is cooperative power and here you ask open questions you refrain from resistance and this one is useful like we said initially we have the appropriate assertiveness so here now is you like is focusing on you so this other one the cooperative power is more like focusing on like when the person on the other the second person that you are talking with for example so how should you position yourself in that situation so you should ask open questions and to refrain from resistance 
you should look to like find options so here like you're trying to cooperate together and should be direct and move to like the positive view also you can like go back to legitimate needs and concerns just like how we have the orange situation so here you are trying to work together to find a solution to the issue but before you do that you have to understand the need then the next one here is empathy and this one is key because it enables you to like um to understand the person that maybe you have the conflict with and like we said this approach i mentioned is when you are in the conflict is happening to you so how you should un handle it so the key is to be like an active listener and we've said over and over again even when we're talking about communication effective communication team lead and leadership and the legs that we should try to be like um active listener and we've explained that being an active listener what you have to do when the person talks you listen um you listen like you are trying to like get the information and while you're doing that you ask questions you check back you summarize just to make sure like you get the whole picture of what the person is saying and as the person is expressing how they feel like you should be all um, affirming it like affirming acknowledging oh i understand like so it makes you feel this way and the lights and the la most important thing is you should try to refrain from inflammation so responding to a complaint or attack on you you should like try to refrain from um inflammation try to like refrain from it's not like an attack on you per se so now how we've talked about when you are when you have conflict with someone and how you can like resolve it when you are the one you are the person like that has the conflict or the one that has the issue so the next thing is how can you resolve conflict and as a leader so how can you resolve conflict as a leader and this can also translate to how you can like resolve conflict when you are not the person that is you are not the one in the picture you are like the third party so the first thing if you are say for example maybe you are the team lead the manager the supervisor or any of those things so as a leader you should try to be proactive in the sense that you should know you should be able to like sense when maybe your team members or your employees when they have like frictions or if something is going on and even before it escalates you are able to like tame it down and you should deal with deal with difficult people and incompetence also you should try to like dig, dig under the surface and by doing that you can like ask questions around try to understand the situation try to understand the main issue that is going on ask overlap um ask probing questions if there is any overlapping responsibilities and the likes so when you've understood what exactly is leading to the conflict and you've come up with a um, solution then you can find allies at different levels to implement the change that you want to to implement the change so and uh, with that it will foster like cooperation within different teams for example if you have say four teams in an organization and you as a leader you have like allies in each of those teams they'll be able to like influence their team to work together and like to understand each other so you should teach new habits for managing differences teach new habits for managing differences we have the lizard listening and the elephant card so basically the um, elephant card is just like they have this card that they use in some organizations where like is a different elephant images that are on it so when you have maybe you have a concern that you want to express so you just pull out the card so that everybody will know like oh this person really wants to address something so that they will, they will everyone will back down and they will hear you out because most times people don't like confrontation but you and even most times people don't like to confront others but once you have the card and you, you pull it out they don't like they will feel like okay this is a safe space and everybody will back down a bit so with that it will enable you to like express yourself and other people too they will be receptive of your concern so and as a leader you should when you are resolving um, conflicts, you should be a mediator and not like a manager. So you should not like already formed a conclusion 
before you know what's happening so you should listen to both parties and don't even most times don't even like give them the answer to it you can ask probing questions let them come up with the solutions themselves like when you are in the leadership position then the next thing is we have some quick tips for conflict resolution so what do you want from the conversation even before starting before having it so here now so here now, say for example, if so, so say for example, if you have um, maybe you are in a meeting with your other colleagues, and then you are expressing your view about something, then another person in that same meeting is just like attacking you, kind of, you know, that you you want to like give an answer. So how should you express yourself in that moment? So before you like say anything that will be emotional and the like, you can just ask yourself like, what do you, like, what's your goal? What do you want to address in that situation? What do you want to um, address even before you have the conversation? What is it that you want from it? And you should be clear on what you are disagreeing on. You should be clear on what you are disagreeing on so such that you know like, it's not the person you are attacking, it is maybe the situation or it is one issue not just you is not the person you are attacking so you should be clear on what you are disagreeing on and also try to see from the other you know, other person's perspective and in some situations you should like give look at it like what's the most generous interpretation you can give what the person is saying and what i mean by that is most times we give ourselves excuses say for example if you are say for example if you are late to work this one is just like you normal know, example so if you are late to work you can come up with excuses oh i woke up late today or it was the train or it was i was just tired like you give yourself example and um, excuses but when it is another um team member or another person that that same that has that same behavior or does the same thing what we come to mind is oh this person is just a late command the person is incompetent so you should just take before you come to all those conclusions you can like take a step back and look at it like what's the most generous interpretation you can give here such that when you are like addressing the person um the issue it will enable you to see from the other person's perspective and then you'll be clear on what you are disagreeing on as well so now let's look at this scenario on conflicts. And here we know like we've been, I've been like talking throughout the whole session basically. So, but here I'll need you guys to um, speak up. So you, your friend who is an intern at a top US company is feeling undervalued and frustrated with his mentor and manager. So despite his enthusiasm for the opportunity, is being treated like an imposition by his employee by his supervisors. They fail to notify him of their absence on Monday, adding his adding to his frustration. He's conflicted about how to proceed and wants to make the most of his internship. So the conflict is interpersonal, stemming from your friend's perceived mis uh, mistreatment of his men mentor and manager, and he feels undervalued and frustrated which may affect his performance and overall experience. Actually, this thing happened to a friend of mine. So just to give it more background, such that you will understand. So the person is interning at a company and it's not like the person was idle or seeking for job. The person is doing like a PhD, is PhD basically. So like the summer internship, he had the opportunity to go intern at a top company. So now, like with the enthusiasm and the likes, the first week went by, the second week went by, the third week, but it's just feeling like the man, the manager and the mentor that were assigned to him, they were not really receptive and like they just felt, he felt as if it was an imposition. So getting to um, Monday, Monday of the fourth week, the manager and the mentor did not show up to work and he was not notified that they were not coming so basically it was just he had nothing to do throughout the day on monday then plus the fact that he had other underlying issues with his manager and his mentor and all of those things just compounded together so how would you if maybe this happened to a friend of yours how would you like address the issue how, what would be your advice to the person So how would you tell the person to like go about it? Anyone? Let's pick up. Hello, 
Google, dar de nu o să scrie. Please, I'm using the emoji so I will show like you can hear me. Okay, so I'm not speaking to myself. Good. So, um, okay, hire managers to report his grievances to. Okay, so any other suggestions? Mm. So, yeah, like, um, you should report to the supervisor, maybe the another supervisor there about. Okay, so yeah, let's move on to the challenge if there's no other discussion on that. So let's see what we have on the challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one is just effective conflict resolution and the importance of it. So all you have to do here, there are five scenarios and you consider each of them and answer the, um, the exercises that follows. So the first scenario, we have Mary, a data scientist that was working on a project called predictive maintenance before she requested leave for an emergency. She asked Samuel to help her continue working on it. After one week, when Mary returned, Samuel had completed the project, which was deemed successful. However, Samuel was given all the credits and bonuses and all the benefits, everything. Why Mary was not even acknowledged. Mary was the one who um, conceptualized the idea and even began working on it. And she was about 60% done before she left. So now she's feeling like, uh, She's not being recognized or acknowledged. So how sh should she do that? So let's look at the second scenario. So you've been hired as a machine learning engineer on a team with five people. Given your previous experience, you are well versed in the better projects that your team is working on. You and John were hired at the same time for the same role, but John lacks like experience. So the team leader assigns more tax to you, which you are okay with, but you are concerned because John is unwilling to learn and turns down your offer of assistance. This creates tension between you and John, and you are frustrated with the team leader for not addressing the issue. So how will you go about this too? So this, how will you address that? So that your, con um, your concerns are alleviated. So you are a data analyst hired by a company in Germany, and you are the only African on your team. Everything goes well, everything is all rosy and everything like your work is going well. Until you stumble upon a spreadsheet containing your team members' salaries, revealing that you are the you are the lowest paid. A European team member hired the same time and level as you received two times higher salary. So you feel discriminated against and undervalued. So, how will you address that issue? So we have the fourth scenario. Alex is a new employee who just joined your team where you serve as a team lead. Shortly after Alex's arrival, you notice some friction between Alex and another team member, Sam. After, asking some, after making some inquiries, you discover that Alex and Sam are old acquaintances who had frequent disagreements outside the work. These past conflicts are now resurfacing, creating tension in the workplace. So during the first few weeks, Alex strives to maintain professionalism, but finds it challenging as old conflicts resurface. So Sam's flexible project management and style, it clashes with Alex's structured approach, leading to miss, missed deadlines. And additionally, Sam is, Sam's blunt communication style often offends Alex, causing resentment and defensiveness. So this conflict strains Alex work um, relationships and productivity. 
The tension is noticeable in team meetings, making other team members uncomfortable and affecting overall team performance. So now you as a team lead, how are you going to address that issue to make sure that all of your team members are on the same page and every the situation is resolved? Now the fifth scenario is, yeah, it's data scientist proposing a new machine learning model to improve customer prediction. However, your team member, David, a longtime employee, resists the idea, claiming it's too complex and will not work, it's just opposing everything. So David's resistance stalls the project and you feel frustrated and undervalued. So how are you going to address that? So the first question here, uh, is that I should explain five ways that you would approach SAMO and the situation to ensure fair recognition and credit of your work and also communicate your concerns to your supervisor or manager to resolve the issue. Now, you should explain also five ways that you could implement to address your concerns with the team leader about John's lack of willingness to learn and unequal distribution of tax then for the third scenario, we have, you should explain five, way, five ways that you would approach the conversation with your supervisor or maybe the HR representative about the salary discrepancies. Then as a team lead, I also explain five ways or five steps you will take to resolve the conflicts within your team and explain five ways that you would approach David to understand his concerns and address his resistance to your proposals. So now given each of these scenarios, you have to come up with five ways or five approaches or how you think you can go about it, just five ways, that you can go about resolving each of the issues that have been um, brought up in each of these scenarios. So that's what the challenge is about. Um, any question, do you understand? Okay, so there are no questions and no, okay, I think that is all. So, yeah, so conflict resolution in the workplace does not really come up as much like that, but it is something that you have to, like in some cases when it comes up, so how are you going to address those things? So that's why it's equally important. But like um like com effective communication, the team um teamwork and the likes, those are things that happen frequently in the workplace. But with this one, it can just be maybe once in a month or even in three months thereabouts. But handling conflict is very important as well. So yeah, that is what we have for this week. And the deadline is on Saturday. Deadline for submission is on Saturday. So once you are done, you are to once you've um, written out the answers to each of the exercises. So you make a PowerPoint presentation, maximum of ten slides that detail your answers to the tax written above, and then you make your submission. Yeah. So I think we are good to go. All right. So let me stop sharing. Let me stop recording.